So my podcast is Metaphysical Rain, and you're Laura Carmen. Uh, I've watched your, pod- uh, your TikToks, and I love your videos, and I kind of want to start off where we were. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, so, yeah, my name is Laura. I run a company called Law of Attraction, and it focuses on empowerment coaching. Um, I'm a spiritual teacher. Uh, I do all sorts of things like tarot reading, energy healing, um, but I also do a lot of practical stuff as well. I've got a background in education and psychology. Um, and so mm-hmm. I kind of merge all of those things together to try and what I do, which is what I call empowerment coaching, which yeah. is taking anybody that's not empowered and empowering them to have their better life. And that's kind of that's kind of me all around. <laughs> yeah. No, I love that. I, um, I've been thinking about going to school myself for um, consciousness and uh, human potential. Uh, I don't really know what I would do with that degree, but it's something I'm really passionate about. Um, I do still have a little bit of faith in humanity, and uh, I think work with that. (laughs) Absolutely. I mean, I think that although, you know, I work in kind of the esoteric and kind of off-piste kind of stuff, there's there's definitely a a lot to be said about education. I mean, I've been a lecturer for for the last six years, so (laughs) I'm not somebody that's kind of anti- kind of the western idea of education but I think that we need to be I think a lot of the things within our society needs to be rewritten to be helpful for everybody rather than just for the few you know yeah uh, we were saying about um indigenous cultures that sort of thing Uh, a lot of history was you know written by well not the people and uh, I think we need to go back to a lot of our ways uh, the animistic beliefs the uh nature you know i mean we've we've become so separated from our our origins and our source and our spirits and i think that that's a lot of why there's so much chaos going on yeah well what, what we've kind of seen since sort of ancient egyptian times is that we've had things called mystery schools and these were the places where all of the esoteric and occulted knowledge was passed from the elders to the new generations and as our society has become progressive um actually what's happened is all of this information has become lost but it hasn't been lost so place people like the rosicrucians the freemasons um yeah. all of these secret societies that are not very secret anymore but all of these secret societies are actually modern mystery schools they teach the history the true history of what the planet is of the connection between source and spirit and we know what the masons call the great architect um oh, yeah. you know in talking about kind of the, the the great architect the people not the people the spirit the the consciousness that created everything and as we've as what i feel that has happened is that there has been a select few that has recognized that if we occult this knowledge i.e if we hide the knowledge what occulted means for anybody that doesn't know um so if we if we hide this knowledge we the people who are hiding the knowledge have something over everybody else because it's this knowledge that allows us to really live and understand what we are and have a true connection to our source which means that you are an empowered being and so the people who are like like for instance the people who set up the freemasons so uh, you know obviously your your america's yeah. kind of you know new people to come into the new world to come and settle and steal from the kind of first peoples that live there uh you know george washington benjamin frank you know the, the list goes on yeah. but these people were fully aware about all of the information that has been now occulted and actually what the people who are kind of at the top of this pyramid the upper echelons the elite what in my opinion that they've done is they've recognized that knowledge is power and so <laughs> if they can occult that knowledge and not just occult it, but also teach the people, the people who's at the bottom of the pyramid, that all of this information is nonsense, conspiracy, um, you know, woo woo, magicalism that doesn't exist, then they stay in power. Yeah. And, and this knowledge has been something that's been passed from generation to generation since ancient Egyptian times. And you'll see that actually within these modern mystery schools, like the Rosa Crucerians that have been running, you know, hundreds of centuries, um, Freemasons running for centuries. And even then, you know, I, I know Masons in the UK and, and the Mo- Masons with the lower levels, they don't really understand what it is that they're going into. They don't really understand that in effect what they're joining in on is, is mysticism and magic until they get to, you know, the 33rd degree and above the third degree for cert- certainly. Um, to even understand this 
It's it's really crazy that you mentioned that even because my uh, my grandfather uh, he was a Mason and my grandmother was a Eastern Star which was the female version, um, but we didn't really know a lot about it. And I remember being a kid and having these recurring dreams of very vivid Masonry symbolism. Like it's very strange that that would keep reoccurring. But I, I've I've learned now that yes, it's very much uh, rooted in like uh, Egyptian mysticism and that kind of thing. It's very crazy. But uh, I've actually had somebody else about a week ago bring that up. My sister and I have been looking into our um, ancestry and we're just finding all kinds of strange things. Well, when I was just talking to you about that and you were just talking about your grandparents and stuff, I started to get what I call God pimples, (laughs) which is like when I feel spirit and source coming in. Um, And so there's something that you need to focus on within that because they're they're telling me for, for you to look, if you've got stuff through your grandparents, um, possessions go and have a look because there's books that they have there that will teach you some of the things that you're looking for is what I've just been told so go on to- yeah <laughs> you're gonna have to go and have a rummage but I think I think what what I find devastating is that actually the the to have these conversations now in public is like we're looked at as being the outliers of society that think- that you know normal people it's been mm-hmm. so occulted now for normal people that and, and atheism has also been sort of pushed so much, you know, in le- intellectualism without actually that, you know, creative side, you know, the intellectual of the of the masculine ideas of just ideas without any soul, without any creativity, you know, loses that gents. The gents of the intelligence is creativity. And that's the reaction, the recreation of what you've learned. And unfortunately, our world at the moment really only just stays to that kind of masculine side of the brain which just talks about learning things and then you know remembering things and that's kind of it really um rather than any recreation and we need to bring back in that feminine to be able to balance things in our world at the moment people are so sort of atheistic with their with their thoughts of actually the world that we're living in and it's very reductionist you know people only think about what they can see what they can touch what they can experience and because of that they've lost they've lost the connection to what they truly are because you're actually you know you're you are actually a spark of source you're a spark of that creation in a meat suit (laughs) you know but but people think they're the meat suit they're like I'm the meat suit I'm I'm this body I am this, and when this body dies, I die. And it's just like this tiny little slither of time in actually what you truly are. Um, and, and you know, we were, we were talking a little bit about how, um, I mean, I, you know, I, I would say sort of the great conspiracy of the last few hundred years and looking at America is a really beautiful example of this because we had people who were aware of this occultic knowledge moving to, you know, a brave new world and in the process of doing that, removing all, if not, you know, as many of the people of the first people that lived there that actually understood what was going on in the world. And the First Nation people of all countries knew a lot more than what we know now. And this this sort of theories of, of the, this occultic knowledge is, is fantasy and it's myth and it's legend. You know, for instance, the stories of the Thunderbird Um, within Native American culture, you know, and like the great rainbow serpent um, in in the Aborigines of, of, you know, of of the indigenous people in in Australia. And all of these stories are not, they're they're stories, but they're stories that talk about some of the most important occultic and esoteric wisdom that we can ever learn. Yeah, I I actually, I mentioned this a second ago, but um, my friend Brenda, she is been a huge influence on me uh she has blessed me with so much of her knowledge and um one of the things that she would talk about is that you know the 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 nations the tribes that they have this prophecy this belief that you know the seventh fires the seventh generation the the rainbow prophecy if you will yeah uh, it lines up with the mayans uh what they believe but it's all talking about we're gonna go through a huge shift and it's i believe it's now i believe it's now (laughs) years i had uh, an experience where i was getting like visions of it and everybody said i was crazy i did too but um no it's it's just become more and more like solidified the longer that i research the more i learn about it 
and it's just a really beautiful concept but people really do think it's just some woo woo stuff like yeah. and it's really frustrating because I mean not only is that kind of inbuilt into racism and I find like in America racism is a completely different issue <laughs> over yep. there than it is anywhere but- else it's a hard topic. <laughs> yeah, but it, but it's, I think it's because of the fact that you're all completely disconnected. I mean, obviously, individuals, you're not. But as a, as a people, as a land, That's you're all so disconnected from who you are and what you are. And, you know, the quashing of the truth of what America is built on, on the truth of the original First Nation people. You know, people like yourself, I think you said that you had um, Irish background. Is that is that right? That if I remember watching a video of yours? Something, something like that. I mean, I, I know I'm ginger for sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you look kind of Scottish, Irish yeah. kind of descendancy. So so for, for, for your family lineage, you know, you've probably got Celtic, Gaelic, which would have been the First Nation people of England um, and in Scotland and Ireland and, you know, the United Kingdom um anybody anybody that's not English is going to just slaughter me there just being like England (laughs) that's like the worst thing (laughs) would read also I um not entirely sure that was that was more Gaelic right uh Druids like Druidry that that was more like a Gaelic kind of uh or Germanic maybe am I right yeah I think so I think there was well England England and all of us you know the whole of the United Kingdom Britannia um is is a very mixed up place the same as what you know america is but the problem is is we know we know our history and we talk yeah. about it happily um i think there's something with america is that your history has become squashed it's been it's become squashed because people don't want to recognize actually what's happened and it's become politicized which oh, yeah. is why you know it's not talked about and and because of this it's become this kind of very hot topic issue that people don't want to touch and so yeah. through not touching it through fear of kind of like offense or, or I don't know, just bringing up stuff that is uncomfortable to deal with, you know, you, you kind of, you never kind of really learn who you all really are. And you've become disenfranchised from your lineage and people like yourself that are, that are settlers to America, yeah. you know, you guys have become disenfranchised because you, you know, I know in America, you, you hear a lot of people describing themselves as like, oh, yeah, I'm Irish. And it's like, well, they, but they've never been to Ireland. It's like you're yeah. American, but your lineage is Irish. But they, there's that desire to connect with that because they don't know where they're from. They don't know who they are. And there's, it's, really it's, it's, it's I, I, devastating. Yeah, it's and it's it's a hard thing to deal with because you you want to have a connection to your where you come from and and who you are and I I have a connection to um, Native American ancestry as well. I mean, I've been told I don't know. It's definitely not enough to claim or anything, but I I've even been told that uh, there's like a Spain Spanish, you know. And I'm just I'm learning all of this. It's so strange because I never would have imagined. I'm like, where is this coming from? But me, me and my sister both are getting into trying to figure it out. Uh, I think we're kind of the black sheep of our family. Uh, our mother was an addict and uh, our whole family has kind of looked at us like, uh, I don't know, I don't know how you're going to turn out. But uh, but now we've just kind of come together and been like, you know what, we're going to make our own thing happen. We're going to figure ourselves out and we're going to reconnect ourselves to where we come from and who we are. Like that's that's been my drive for the past couple of years, is just learning, understanding, finding truth. I mean, the most important thing for people it, it, as individuals is to know who you are why you are where you are and where you've come from and if you aren't if you can answer those questions then you can see fully where you're going to you know history in our history and our lineage lineages are are um you know our, our generational trauma is passed genetically now i think they've set up to 30 generations so for oh, yeah. instance if you've if you've come from um like a, a lineage of Irish settlers, for instance, that had come over in the potato famine, that that famine is hardwired into your DNA as something that you will experience as present day within yourself as a present day trauma effect for your life. So this could manifest for, for a person like, you know, just using you as an example, but if that was the case that your, your great great grandparents had come over in the, in the potato famine to settle in America, and then 
you here now in this present day have an issue with scarcity and you have trouble letting go of things that don't serve you and you have trouble um you know not squirreling away money and things like that and you think or you have a poverty mindset where you can't keep hold of money and you can't keep hold of things and you're always in this cycle of like lack a lot of that is spirit is spiritually connected to where you've come from because you know the genetic lineage is just like a line after line after line of like person 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 and this you know your grandmothers and your great your great grandfathers and the people that have come before you you are the culmination of them and all of their experiences so something that happened when when you know the first settlers came you know the white man as it were came to america and and stole the history rewrote the history books even the conquistadors you know in, in south in south america he doesn't you know not doesn't necessarily feel white man but thinking particularly about north america and kind of like you know george washington and that and and the setters on that side of things but about disenfranchising people from your original story how in god's name are you going to heal yourself when you don't know what you're healing yourself from and like that's I think a lot of people's issue is that specifically and because America is a melting pot of so many people we we don't we don't know and the people who do know they try to hold on to their culture but a lot of times it's it's like traditions and things like that mm. and, um and now everybody's kind of going away from that even further because they're like well this isn't working for us it doesn't work for everybody and it's it's a hard thing to deal with when you have so many different backgrounds of people and how are you all supposed to get along, get together and and connect? But I found that no matter where you're from and who you are, you're going to be able to find some common ground with somebody. Well, well, we're all the same. You know, it doesn't matter where you're from or who you are. And this is the interesting thing, as we were just talking about a minute ago, about the stories of the tribes. If you if you if you speak to various tribes, I've worked with different kind of, you know, shamans from Native American, like I've worked with shamans from south america i've worked with different you know shamans as a general kind of term spiritual teachers i've worked with druids pagans um and and i i I go across the board i've gone from buddhism to hinduism to shamanic to tatars from the from south america it doesn't matter if you talk to all of these people their stories are all the same the stories are all the same they said the same thing like there's so many overlapping themes in the moral compass i guess that they run by or the 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 teaching the belief systems they're they're trying to say very similar things of you know you got to connect you got to connect these things i just i don't i've never really understood how people don't see the connections and i always thought i was kind of strange for being able to see the world in a way that like i would point out stuff and be like well these things connect and be like how do you what are you talking about mm. and i like there's that that level of um what's the word uh, cognitive dissonance yeah and it, and it is and it the problem is is that pe- because you know america's a really beautiful example from this and i can pick on it all day long because i'm not from there <laughs> you know but our perception my perception as somebody who 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 hasn't been i have been to america my mum lived in canada for about 10 years um you know so so i've got that kind of experience obviously it's not not america but um and then i've got fr- i've got a friend of mine who lives in canada at the moment you know so, yeah. so, and we, we obviously, you know, we're across the pond from each other. We're kind of intrinsically linked pretty, pretty well, kind of the UK to, to the US. And what I see happening at the moment in the United States of America is huge amounts of identity politics. And that identity politics is rooted in that insecurity of not knowing who you actually are. And so yeah. people pick out these genetic lineages because they feel like that determines them, which is why you say, you know, uh like i'm um you know uh what it, like a like a italian american or a or a man, an afro-american or you know and you describe yourself as a, a such and such american or an anglo-american you know and yeah yeah in an in an attempt to identify with something that you are but but that's just verbose it doesn't actually help anybody to kind of really discover who they truly are and i think because the fact that the the people that originally went there to settle to kind of create the United States as what it is now, I feel like they genuinely had a vision for creating what America is in this present day, which is in effect, I'm going to say a slave country um, because, and and we are the same over here. It's no judgment. We're exactly the same here. 
Um, and I know that people who maybe have, well, and it's a contentious issue um, in, in America because of the things that we just talked about, but we're, we're all slaves to the same system and the system is capitalism. It really is. And, and, and I feel like the United Kingdom um, and America has now become kind of like the new slave countries. For the for United Kingdom, well, it always kind of has been, really. I was going to start mentioning about colonialism in, in India, but we had, we had orphanages and workhouses still running in here. It's just nobody, nobody said anything about that, really, you know. Let's um, sweep it under. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it, you know, I, I think that what we need to recognise, I think, is that there has been a two, three hundred year plan um, maybe longer than that, maybe, yeah, maybe m much longer than that, that, that people were aware of, if we keep the knowledge to ourselves and we keep it occulted, then we can have these people at the bottom of this pyramid, the, the, you know, the lower people are on in, uh, who, who will work for us, who will do everything that we want them to do, and they will ensure that we at the top of the pyramid will have the best lives. And, and we see this now, I mean, you know, in the last, you know, in the pandemic for the last two years, you know, people have either been out of work or have been working hard from home. And that we, it's been one of the biggest wealth transfers that we've ever seen in the last two, 300 years, where the billionaires have made so much more money. We've had new billionaires being created in the pandemic when people now in a first world country are on the poverty line. And the reason why that is, to my mind, is because one, the people are disenfranchised from themselves. And so they are so atheistic, which is without understanding of what this world is, that they live for the moment and they believe that the only God of this world really is money. And so they're happy to slave themselves because they think that that is the end goal. And, and I find that kind of quite bizarre, really, because there's no pockets in shrouds. And if I thought that this was my only life and, 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 I couldn't take money with me when I go. The last thing I'd be doing is working 40 hours a week to keep a billionaire in a, in a yacht. Or so, someone else. Yeah, and it's, it's that cognitive dissonance that you just spoke about. It's like, you know, people who, because I find it quite interesting, my, my, my partner's quite agnostic and, and we've had conversations about this at points when he can be quite atheistic. And he's like, well, I, I don't believe there is another life. So, you know, I think that he thinks that he's going to try harder because this is the only life that he's got. Whereas I'm like, but does that even work? Him. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm up here doing my life, living my best life, being an entre entrepreneur, living one world in the spirit and one world in the flesh. And, mm. um, and, and, and I see him and I'm like, mm, you're being, he's still a slave. You're being a slave. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think, I think that one of the beauty things of the Great Awakening is that something we just kind of touched on a moment ago is actually that through this Great Awakening from the pandemic that people have begun to realize that they are slaves and that mm -hmm. to be a slave doesn't necessarily mean like, you know, what, what we're thinking about, you know, the East India trading kind of regimes and, and the, yeah. you know, the Africans that were stolen and brought from, or from the Caribbean to America in the original kind of slave trade. Um, the slavery is still going on it's just a slavery of transitions yeah it and, I, yeah and and, and also no. who's not aware that's what it that's what it comes down to who's not yeah aware? it's within the mind is it you know it's, it's, a, it's a slavery of the mind it's a slavery that you need money that you have to get a good job that you have to work hard that if you go to school and do these things and and none of that is true because it, you know some of the hardest workers on the planet are probably nurses and and here they get paid the least you know they work 12 hours that's my cat not a ghost don't worry <laughs> yeah. um, um but you know you think they, they work 12 hour shifts four days on and they earn pittance over here so if hard work and education gets you far in life you know really the people at the top of the pyramid should be should be nurses should be should be like oh. that and it's not and it isn't because that's not what gets you to the top of the pyramid and what gets you to the top of the pyramid as it were is that occultic knowledge that has been hidden from the peoples for a very long time oh, i believe that for sure i mean uh, uh, speaking on that i was going to uh, mention this earlier but have you ever read the kybelian or the kybalon yeah parts the, of it the part about uh those who have eyes to see and ears to listen uh my husband read it and the way he took that was well 
that that's iffy to me because that's like a like a secret thing like you're keeping us out of it and I'm like no that's not really what it is the knowledge is there you have to seek it Mm. if you don't don't want to learn it if you don't want to listen to it if you don't want to see what they're trying to say you're not going to Mm. it's not a cutoff kind of thing it's that you have to seek it out but nobody knows to seek it out but we see that now I mean you you know we were talking about kind of Christianity um I think uh, and 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 all of the sacred texts all of the scriptures are all talking about the same sorts of things um it's just that again they've been kind of perverted and bastardized to stop people really understanding what the true messages of these texts are you know and the Kabbalion talks about it as well as you know the books I think it's in the New Testament that says towards the towards revelation where it talks about that those with eyes will be able to see what's happening on happening Now, right now, I genuinely believe, and not from a Christian doctrine point of view, from the genuine meaning of what the books of the scriptures were about. Oh, yeah. We are currently, and, you know, the Mayans talked about this, you know. Everybody talked about it. I mean, some of them are a little darker than others, but yes, yeah, so they're all oh, talking about the same things that's happening right now. now. The apocalypse. Like, <laughs> I, a couple of years ago, um, I, I kind of touched on this a little bit, but uh, I had what I can only describe as a, a mystical experience. I was, I was completely, it, it was one of those peak experiences that uh, like a uh, Carl Jung or uh, Maslow talk about in uh, so um, self-transcendence is that like moving beyond the, you know, myself and I, it's, it's there, there is this oneness. Mm-hmm. We are all a part of the same system, a part of the same universe. And there is a, a collective unconscious, if you will, mm-hmm where we're all connected to and that goes back in with the uh the genetics and that sort of thing i mean if you look into like the akashic library that would be like the spiritual record keeping that our dna holds we have Mm -hmm. a biological record keeping system but we also have a spiritual and collective conscious combination of this knowledge Mm -hmm. it's there and I, i feel like people don't really see that there is that that dualistic nature to it but it's it's also paradoxically one and none uh, it's it's very confusing when I try to explain it to people because they're like, well, that that's contradictory. And I'm like, exactly. That's, that's what it is. It is a complete contradiction of itself. I mean, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. And it makes sense to me, be, but this is that thing those with eyes can see and those <laughs> with ears can yeah. hear. And, and it, you know, going back to that, the problem is, is that if you don't have the actual awareness that you were something before you were you, and before you become entrenched in the ego of the I, of the individual, if you can step away from that, you can actually then tap into the hive mind. And you, the hive mind is that, that um, sensory awareness that you were something before you came, be, became you. You'll be something after your you in physical form. And that those things are all connected prior to this, which is why a lot of the stuff that is taught to create this cognitive dissonance within people and to keep the occultic knowledge that we are all one effectively um, and that we are we all come from God, um, you know, or source or the higher mind or whatever you want to call it. The fact that that has been occulted leaves people vulnerable to this ideology that you as an individual is all that you are. And when you think me as an individual, well, I'm just Laura and Laura wants to do this and Laura likes that and Laura is this. And I start identifying with all this random shit, which is what I then, yeah, you become more and more intensely warped into this ego, the the Mm -hmm. original self of, of like, of this disconnected self from God. Now, the individual is disconnected from God because it has the awareness that it is an individual. You can't yeah. be one with everything and think you're an individual at the same time. It doesn't work that way. And so this thought pattern that has been pushed, um, and I think it kind of runs into solips- solipsism um, and some of the kind of, you know, some of the more kind of, um, kind of I, I don't know, I was going to talk about a bit kind of like um, Jungian theory of kind of archetypes and things. So oh. That would take us off a little bit. But to, to, to become so attached to the ego, and when I say ego, for anybody listening that doesn't know what I mean by this, I'm not talking about you being arrogant and thinking like me. It's, 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 a, it's the connection with you as an individual. Now, if you are a reductionist and somebody that is a materialist, 
that is like, I think therefore I am, and you're touching, that's the table, the table's there, you know, and that's your experience of the world. You can't even, even ex- understand that you're something other yeah. than, than this person in this body. But that idea and that disconnection from God, because we've in effect become trapped in our meat suits, which kind of becomes a prison for spirit in this realm, if you can't disconnect from the ego and the original thought that I am an individual, then this is where we see things like identity politics that take root, that people, you know, dissolve and, and genocides. Genocides happen because we look at that as being the other. I am yeah. this and you're the other. Separateness. Yeah. And it's the separation that causes all of the problems. When you recognize that we're all one, one great big family and it doesn't matter whether you know you know racism is built in this doctrine of the fact that of the, that i'm an individual and you're something else um and this predication that there's something different and it's devastating because when people if we were raised to instead of you know what's the first thing that people ask you like when you meet somebody you say hi i am laura hi i'm laura you know and we identify with our names now before language was created, people didn't think in individualistic terms because they couldn't express themselves as individuals. They were part of the collective. And that's exactly. why it's really important that we, we listen to First Nation peoples because the, the information that has been passed, and talking about the ancient Egyptians at the beginning, you know, the information has been passed through pictorial languages. Oh yeah, it it transcends the the need for the the littering, the language part of it because you can a lot easier decipher that because there is a visual. I mean, it, we we all are able to. That's why symbolism. I'm sure you you've read about the, um, Carl Jung and uh, the symbolism book he wrote, but it, that's so true. And because you know Western society, we're so cut off from a lot of Eastern and a lot of Indigenous and you know things like that types of symbolism. It's not ingrained in us for it to trigger some kind of uh, information. But that whereas in Eastern countries, they are you know, brought up with these symbolisms and things like that, these teachings. And so there, there's this idea of, I don't really know how to say it. There's more of a connection to that. Like it triggers you to wake up in a way and seek out these types of uh, altered states or altered perceptions. And a lot of Western society is not, it's not founded on that. And you, yeah. It's there but it's not something that's as easily recognizable. Well, the problem is, is that the language disconnects you from source. The language disconnects you from your original self because through the language, it perverts the holy. Mm -hmm. So particularly if you think about like um, English, which has now become the the language of the world, um, you know, other than Spanish, which Spanish is better than better than English, if you think about it from kind of like a, a point of view from the spiritual. Yeah. English language has become is, is the bastardized version of Germanic, of Latin, of a com- culmination of many different languages pushed together. Now, what happens is that originally through the pictorial languages, you are not creating a vibration of something when you're absorbing information. Does that make sense? So if I'm if I'm looking at a comic and it's got no words, okay, I'm not ex- yeah, I'm not experiencing that on a vibrational basis where I'm creating kind of like a uh, like a uh, like a um, like a I don't know like a phantasm or something of that thing, right? Yeah. So, so the language, what what language does is it perverts actually what we're trying to say. It, it bastardizes the the information. If I, say, if I showed you a photograph of something and didn't, there was no language on it, what that does is it taps into the innermost subconscious, which is one, one place that's most connected to your heart center and to God. Now, language comes from the intellect. And when we talk, you know, they call it spelling for a reason, words and vibrations, the vibration created this universe. So our words can create um, yeah. emotions, feelings, um ideas it you know me saying shall we go and build a house that will create the creation in aspect now what people aren't aware of is that because of the way that language has been formed and particularly things like english language it's become bastardized so much that the words that we use (laughs) 
the words that we use actually no longer represent the things that we're talking about. And uh, it's also being infiltrated. Yeah, when I speak, or uh, in the beginning, you know, in the beginning, the word was God or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Book of John. In, you know, in the beginning, the word was good and it was with God. And that's because mm-hmm. the vibration, it talks about the vibration. If you look at the, the original text in, you know, the Nakamadi or the Vedas, um, you know, it talks about that in the beginning, there was a noise and the vibration created. Now, now we use our vibration no longer as a creation, but it, it, it does create. We're just not consciously aware that the things yeah. that we're saying um, we create. Creation, we're creating. Like yes. That's, that's, I think that's what part of that disconnection we were talking about comes from also. We don't realize how powerful the words can be. Yeah. And people have become so occulted from that knowledge now that they've lost the understanding that the things that you say about yourself and the things that you say out loud create your universe, they create your reality. And this is some of the most potent information that is taught in some of the, you know, some of the ancient ancient mystery schools, whether it's the Freemasons or, you know, talking about, um, you know, the Kabbalah or, or some of the ancient mystery, any of the mystery texts, they talk about the fact that the original originator, the, the source, created the world and created the universe through vibration and now people are people are aware of that because look at quantum physics you know look at science people think now you know an atheist will say oh science disproves spirituality mate if you understand spirituality (laughs) science is science is proving it right (laughs) yeah it's different experiences i think spiritual is more of the intuitive uh emotional intelligence level of things and then there's the science where we are observationally and experientially observing these spiritual phenomena i mean it's reductionist and it's materialist is that again uh, what i see that exists but there's you know how many people that I mean, look at flat earth, for instance, is a really hot topic at the moment. And I think it's really interesting from an intellectual perspective. (laughs) I think it's interesting from an intellectual perspective, because actually what a lot of the flat earthers I know, they don't actually believe that earth is flat. They're just saying that you don't know that the world is a globe. Yeah, and, and if people are taking it from a perspective of if I've seen it, I'll believe it. Well, have you ever seen the world with your own damn eyes to say, exactly. yes, that is a globe. And I think this is the problem is that now uh, science has become the new religion and religion is, the, is, is really problematic because religion is about not you having a relationship to God, it's you having a relationship to an egoic human being that says that they know God and that you can't have a relationship with God. That's what religion is about. And you don't need another person to have a relationship with God because you, you are a spark of God. <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, we are it. I guess Christianity a little bit. I mean, the the vessel part of it. You know, you are you are a temple in a way, mm-hmm. and I have misconstrued that that idea, but it, it's true because when you look within uh, that know thyself type of uh, um, seeking, you find the entire universe within yourself. I mean, what, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, it's like being able to, uh, like we have a multiverse basically in our minds. If we can imagine it, then we can create it. If it's in a book, then it must be a universe of its own, even if it just exists within your mind. Mm. I forgot what it's called, but I mean, we might be three dimensionally in our, in our physical, but our minds can think in realms that we can't experience. And it's, it's just very strange to me that we're, we're able to think like that. And yet we can't fathom our own universe that we exist in. It's, it's just, it's too far outside of our range of uh, perception. So, I mean, the reason why people are not able to kind of ken the fact that you, that they are something more than this is because they've been indoctrinated into the idea that all you are is this. And if you've grown up, which is it's just the same thing about America, is about oppressing the original information and oppressing a whole land of peoples, I, even the peoples that were originally connected with, with the understanding of that you're more than what you are as an individual. And the oppression of that is done purposely to keep the people in the top of the pyramid at the top of the pyramid. Now they are, they're fully aware that they can create through language. If you think about like the Wright brothers, what makes me laugh, right? Sometimes I, I work with people who are very, um, Ooh, you know, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, kind of feeling. <laughs> and you're like, 
you're like okay so like think about what you what you could what you could do think about what you could be oh I couldn't be anything oh I couldn't do anything and you're like okay well you're not gonna do anything or be anything if that's what you think because everything you think um you know there's a really brilliant um like a I think he's Rastafarian um I hope I'm outspoke with that but a guy who's called Maccabee um and he's a musician he's like from the 80s and he, he sings a song like anything your mind can see you can manifest easily if only you have the thought every thought becomes yeah. sparks the reality you know and and it's like yes and this is the ancient knowledge the ancient knowledge is that your words create things that magic is real that the things that you think can act as the spark of creation and when in you know for instance we were talking about christianity in the bible where the bible talks about this when jesus talks about that ye are creators and yeah. we were made in the image of the creator is because we are creators we have the yeah. ability to create on this planet so animals are different to us because they don't really have the power to create they have the power to realign the creation okay so if you think about like a bird or something that can create a nest it's realigning the creation it's not creating something from nothing whereas they're, they're, human beings can create something from nothing yeah they definitely have a, a, a spirit and an energy of their own it's it's not quite like our, ours but it it's, it is almost it's very well, strange they, they they are I mean, I, they, they're just as aware. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm completely anti-speciesist because <laughs> I think, I think, you know. Goals, I swear, like, I mean, like they understood, they knew what was going on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, an, but animals are different to us because they are, they're in the present moment and they're not the, cre- they don't have to have the, they, because they've never been taught that they're individuals, they don't have the disconnection from source that we have. So and they're, we, they're much more. They run on these primal instincts, and I don't know if you've ever heard of the the hundredth monkey effect, but it's yes. it's a fast. That's so fascinating to me because I think people work like that too. But with animals, it's you know if the hundredth, you know, number of the species learns something, then across the board, members of the species start to learn this. I trait. mind. <laughs> yeah, like it's so it's so. It's right there in front of us, and we've just we've just been like, oh no, that well, I don't know what you're talking about. And, uh, again, very- you know things things to do with you know charles darwin for instance and 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 the predication that um about speciesism and and racism these two things are interlinked and because human beings are so rooted in their ego and rooted in what they can see they see i am a human being and that is a cat and so they yeah. are completely different and so they've got this very disconnected reductionist view of the world Whereas actually, if you recognize that's a spark to a spark of God's consciousness, that's a spark of God's consciousness there. I'm a spark of God consciousness within our own little meat suits or fur coats, whatever we're, yeah. whatever we're wearing for our time around the sun. And th- this predication that because you are an individual, that you are different to the other, people become too rooted in what you look like which then allows for things like speciesism and racism because they look and they say well that person's got more melanin than me so they must be different and it's like mm, I, I the fact that people even think that to my mind is so fucking insane i can't even imagine like two arms two legs nose mouth eyes it's like saying to me to my mind people who who think that we're different races I just can't even understand how you'd be that stupid or that have that level of a cognitive dissonance because it's like saying that a black cat with black fur is different to a white cat with white fur and that there are different species like are you insane like we don't do I've got two cats that brother and sister one's just walked in he's gray and white and the other one is black and white they're not different species <laughs> and well, yeah. <laughs> but this is this is what's happened with the human beings is because they've become so disconnected from what we are and they've become so entrenched in the individual in the individualist view of the world and the thing that really perverts it and creates the perversion in a human mind is the language the fact that we can say this or that the animals don't have the language and so they don't have the problems that we've got because they are experiencing life in a completely different way because they're just experiencing it whereas what we're doing is we are 
experiencing it and then turning it into language and the language is actually the thing that causes the problem and i it's funny because i was i was thinking about this the other day but our our like collectively as a as a as a human being you know humanity as a whole we i have this very romanticized uh, belief of it or a uh, way of viewing it and it's that i mean we're, we're like the windows that the universe uses to view its own creation. It is both yeah. the creation, the creator, and it's this beautiful like song that's been playing since the beginning. And I don't even why think... is it called the universe? It's the one song, the universe, the one song yeah. that has been playing that's created everything. It is a spiral into the infinite, and I mean, it, its energy cannot be created or destroyed, but I mean, it can be transferred and transmuted. And I mean, we're just constantly recreating ourselves. I mean, biologically and consciously, and it's it's such a beautiful thing to me. But I just I feel that other people are not as aware of that that beauty in that. And mm-hmm. I think yes, we get caught up in the in the the me and the I and right here now kind of thing and the what's in front of us. But almost it's almost like you have to go within and inward and focus on the individual and find that individuation uh, or self actualization, so that you can then transcend that idea of well, it's just I and this, you know, there's that separateness. You have to go through that to go through the nexus of it, if you will. Yeah. And this is the, you know, this is the turmoil of this universe, of this, of this, of this plane of reality is that it is, it is, it is very complex and it is um, oppositional. You know, Mm -hmm. we live in a world of duality. You can't have light without darkness. You can't have good without bad. And then people kind of go, why do bad things happen on this plane? Well, good things can't happen without bad things happening. Didn't know the bad. It's kind of like you have to have that equal and opposite for you Mm -hmm. to have it at all. Yeah, and science talks about this, that every every action has an equal and opposite reaction. And this is this, this is the thing that you're just talking about is that you have to know the individual. You have to become so entrenched in the individual before you can understand that you're part of the collective. Because I how mean, can you understand you're part of collective if you haven't got even, understanding of the individual? Yeah. And, and it's just, I, I always say like, you know, all the spiritual work that I do with everybody, it's always just, there's always a kicker. Do you know what I mean? It's like something will happen and then you, the thing that you think you're supposed to be doing is probably the exact opposite of the thing that you should be doing <laughs> so and it's it's just this great joke like, like i sorry to interrupt you there I, I have a bad habit of that but i, I, do. I, I don't <laughs> trust themselves like i don't i think that i've become i'm just now getting back into trusting my intuition and trusting you know my my finding system i don't gps spiritual gps if you will um but I didn't for so long and I'm still not quite where I would like to be with that. And I think most people don't trust their own judgment and you almost kind of can't because we're basically hallucinating our reality. I mean, who's to say that your memories and my memories are the same because we're experiencing different, completely different realities in the same outer. I mean, it's difficult. I think that, okay, so there's two points there. One is intuition and one is thought. So, and they're two completely different things. So thoughts happen up here. Intuition happens down here. Now, yeah. what you're thinking, don't trust what you're thinking because yeah. the thinking is attached to your ego. The thinking is attached to the individualist. The, the intuition, that's, that's connected to God. Absolutely. That is God. That's your higher self. That is source, whatever you want to call it, that doesn't trigger the shit out of you. People hate the word God now because of religion. Well done, guys. Um, <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the energy that you cannot see within us, it's the, it's the force. Quantum physics talks about it. If you're an atheist, then the, the, the unseen forces of this universe. Vibes, vibration, yeah. gut instinct. It doesn't matter. It's the same thing the animals run off of. You know, when you walk into a room and you go, oh, I'm not sure I don't feel safe here. I, I don't like this person or I get a bad vibe off this person. That's not because you're thinking things. Your brain will come in and go, hang on a minute. Give the guy a chance. You don't even know him. Don't listen to you- him. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Follow your gut instinct. And what you were just saying then about, you know, that God is experiencing itself in infinite ways through individualism. And this is the beauty. So when you're down here as an individual, the aim of the game is remembering that you're God. Now, when you're there, the name of the game is trying to become an individual. Because when you're everything, you want to be one thing. When you are all encompass omnipotent light of omniscience, what would you want to become to experience? You want to experience hardship and darkness and sorrow and pity and misery and, and 
different yeah. emotions yeah and that's the yeah. beauty of being a human being it's a game it's a it's a world and it's a world of enjoyment now if you don't understand your source in in like a spark of source in a body then people go to me well why did i get cancer well without sounding really flippant actually source kind of loves having cancer because it's kind of dramatic it's kind of interesting what's going to happen <laughs> Think about what's important to you because I've, I've gotten sick before and I thought I was going to die and I just this full acceptance of it. I was like, you know what? I've lived an all right life. I've loved, I've, I've laughed, you know, that kind of thing. And um, it, it kind of puts you in that state of appreciation or, yeah. or you can go either way with it. But I think most people try to enjoy and, and see what, what their value of their life is, even if it's going to inevitably, inevitably end sooner than they might have thought. And, and the problem is, is that if you live in a materialist and reductionist view world of the world, then that answer makes you want to punch the person in the face because it's like, oh, well, God's enjoying himself. You're like, what? Yeah. But the problem is that the people think that God is this guy up on a cloud that's like playing the Sims you know, yeah. and, and, and just inflicting horrible stuff on people. But it's like, that's not, that isn't what's happening here. What's happening here is that, God is like doing a finger puppet show for itself. And it's like, yeah. okay, well, this little piggy went to market, you know, and it talks about, you know, it's all these different expressions of the world. And why? Because it's enjoyable. When you are omnipotent and you are omniscient and you are everything. And I've when had ex- of that, exactly. Like, so, so I've had experiences where I've been up there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, when I'm up there, it's, um, it's like just light and awareness and, yeah contentment and peace that's what it kind of feels like so the place work merges <laughs> so and i have this really good story for this it's like you know the little light is upstairs um talking to talking to god as it were and it says i am the light i am the light and um god says yeah yeah you are the light you're the light and then he goes god god how light am i how light am i and he goes are you sure you want to find out little light and he's like yeah yeah i want to know how light i am so God casts the light into the darkest place in the world and the little light sits there and goes, why have you forsaken me, God? And it's like, how can you know how light you are until you can experience the darkness? And this is the problem. The people that we come here to experience the things that we experience because it teaches us the things that we wanted to experience when we are just up there as we being up- one with God. Experience the, the um, I, I don't even know if the uh, corporeal, corporealness of the physical yeah, you, you have to have that experience of it because if you were, you know, some omniscient being just knowing in consciousness but not experiencing anything, that would be kind of sad. Mm. You almost have to create this this grand love affair. It is it is this beautiful experience and it is a happening and it is all right now. And it's just, I, I love thinking about this. I try to put myself in the right now as much as possible because we forget. We're always thinking behind or in front of us. And I mean, you're going to trip if you do that, you know, like you can't be looking in front of you or behind you if you're not looking where you're stepping. It's, it's, there's a part of the appreciation of the, where you are right now. And if you have gratitude for it, that's the fastest way to bring in more of the things that you do want in this life. Yeah, absolutely. And if you're not grateful, you're going to get a kick up the butt from your higher self to make sure you are. And this is where people see great losses in their lives. And I think that, you know, there is that phrase and we understand it from a human kind of reductionist perspective, because if you've broken up with somebody, people say to you, better to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. And this is the experience, you know, the experience of God in effect is that it's all loving that has never kind of been without love. So how can you experience what love is when you've only ever had love? It's like saying to you, oh, do you, you know, have you ever missed not being a man? And you're like, what? I've never been a man. I don't know what that feels like. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I don't know what it is. I've only ever been myself. I only ever been that, you know, whereas if, if I, if I'd had the opportunity, you know, where somebody said to me for a day, oh, I could be a man and I could go and experience life as a man. Sure. I'd love to take that because how interesting would that be? And that's exactly the same experience. Why do human beings play games? Look at the games that we play. Look at the virtual reality games that we play. Often it's like running away from zombies in a war situation, killing people, and then people question why bad things happen on this plane. Like, are you absolutely insane? The you reason think- why you play, yeah, exactly. why do you play games where you're going around shooting people, Grand Theft Auto, you know, being a criminal, murdering people, running people in from the streets, you know, why are you playing that game? Why? Because it's the antithesis of the life that you live and because it's 
fun because it's different to the thing that you're actually doing. And that's exactly the same reason why the main creator has created all of this beautiful universe of duality. So it can experience all of the things that it's not able to exist on the upper plane because the upper plane is just like light. It's just a plane of golden yeah. light. Awareness, it is the, the consciousness, the, the all-knowing, the omniscience, if you will. And that seems so boring by itself. It's it I've been so up there. I've been up there in spirit form, and I, and I've I've it, I basically became the easiest way to describe it would probably be I became a particle, and in that yep. moment of being a particle, it was like a drop of I explain it like a drop of treacle in caramel. Okay, so it all it was all gold and brown, and it was all very warm and lovely and sweet and delicious. And I had the sensory awareness that I've always been the caramel, but I also had this understanding that I used to just be toffee or whatever my original yeah. thing was. So treacle. So, so this, this kind of awareness that I had an awareness that I was an individual, but I also had this awareness that I was everything as well. And that was yeah. my experience of, 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 of basically leaving my body and being in spirit yeah. at that point. And similar but it, i like the way you describe it with the the being the the, car, the caramel like it, it does kind of feel like that it's it's, it's strange um, it's like it's like that sort of you know you ever get like a smell of like that just makes you feel like for me it's cats i love cats so yeah. you ever like just bury your face in a cat and you're like damn this smells like home or, or I know. some people it's like warm cherry pie or something or like apple pie or something something that gives you that or cinnamon or something something that gives you that real like, mm, feeling yeah and it's like that. And then, you know, sweetness. And it's like all of the best parts of life that just make you feel like, oh, wow. You know, that, that make you feel that loveliness. But how could you ever really recognize that feeling of loveliness if you've ever not felt lovely? You know, you have nope. to not feel lovely to be able to recognize it. Nope. And that's what this whole damn world is all about. It's why we live in a, in, in a plane of dualism. And that's why it's really confusing because people are like, okay, so I've got to remember I'm the one but I'm living in a dualistic society. I've got to remember this, but I've, I've got all of that as well. And it's like, you, it's, it is like the triangle, you know? It's like, you have to remember you've got these two bottom bits to be able to kind of go up to the top bit. Um, Points where two lines meet. <laughs> yeah, and, it's, and, and I think this is, you know, I mean, that's interesting about the third eye kind of perspective there, just kind of thinking out loud is like, you know, through these two eyes, you can culminate from your materialist ex experience to the inward experience of the one eye. So you know, of this one God's eye that really is the thing that kind of everything comes from. But the language is the thing that perverts that, it. I mean, sorry, I interrupt you oh, again, but... I interrupt all the time. When you're a divergent, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, I love the back and forth. It's, it's good. Um, but, you know, like the, the pine cone, the pineal, uh, there's this, this symbolism of it throughout just all these different cultures and times in, in our history. And what's crazy to me is that we, we don't, most people don't really know the, the science behind it, but I, oh, it, I could go into it for hours, but simply it's the, the crystals, the DMT crystals that are in your pineal. And it's what's released when we're born and when we die. It is mm -hmm. a, a portal to this, this realm. I mean, it Very is the spirit to us through that God's eye. And, uh, you know, back in February, I went to an ayahuasca re retreat, which is the 5-MEO um, mixed with the DMT and talking about the original shamanic people of this world and the original witch doctors or whatever you would like to call them medicine men uh, tribal elders the wise <laughs> ones <laughs> but you know the shamans is kind of like a you know thing that everybody is widely used now for for all of them yeah. but um the the how on earth if these people are not in connect with something else how on earth could you get two people walking around you know people walking around the Amazon rainforest and know that that vine with that tree can be pulled yeah. together to bring two of the most nation. And in, they say it's, in, it's impossible. It's impossible. And they also didn't, if you ask them about it, they don't say, oh, we went around and just mixed all the leaves together. We just kept on mixing and mixing and mixing until somebody, something happened. No, well, they were knowledge. Like they, they, they were like, given that knowledge. That's, and that's so beautiful. Like I just like they, they're deeply understanding of that. They, they're yeah. in connection. But this proves it, to my mind, this proves it because now we have science that is catching up with thousands of years of indigenous information and tribal awareness that is circumvents, it circumvents some of the knowledge that we have now. You know, I, and all, you know, things like, you know, the Mayan people, the Aztecs, how the hell did they build all that stuff? Don't tell me that these people were Bronze Age people running around with sticks and stones. Like, are you, are the people insane? 
to even think this. The, the amount of advanced advance, advancement uh, as a society, a lot of the indigenous people were when, when Europeans first came here. It's crazy because there's not a lot of history about it, but we're starting to resurface of that. No, they had extremely advanced agriculture. They had flipping gardens so that they would water themselves, which is people, I mean, nobody's really thought of that now. And I think it's so fascinating that they were so in tune with it and they knew exactly how to work the land so that they weren't overtaking resources and they were able to put back and there is just such a perfect harmony. And people I, came and said that it was, they're like, no, that's not right. I don't know what you're talking about. But, but like, this culture- is the thing. This is that disenfranchising you from yourself. Like if you, if you think, if your perspective is that we are at our highest amount of awareness, intellect, science, technology right now, you're wrong. <laughs> Just anybody listening, you're wrong. Um, but, but, but if that's your experience of the world, um, why, you know, then, then it creates where we are at the moment, okay? And it, mm-hmm. it, it, it shows that there's this, like, very clear lineage. However, that clear, like, line of history only really runs for a few hundred years. And if you look yeah. at America, it's like, okay, so, so why were all the Mayans and the Aztecs wiped out? Why were the Native Americans? Why were these genocides happen? Why did these genocides happen? And to my mind, they happened deliberately because how can you enslave a whole population of people when you have people who are telling you, hang on a minute, we've been doing that for hundreds of years. You guys aren't advanced. You don't know what you're talking about and your history is wrong. So when you can lure people in to a false history, a false rhetoric that, you know, that the, the, the Mayans were backward people, that they were Bronze Age people, that... The, to follow this, that, and the other because we're materialists, we're reductionists, that God doesn't exist. If you can lure people into that rhetoric and that story, you can create what the United States and England actually is now. Huh. And to, to completely beautifully wrap back around to the original conversation, that all of that has been done deliberately because it allows people to become those slaves because you begin to disenfranchise from your original awareness of why we're here what this planet is and who you are and if you just think that all the people that came before you are just cavemen backward savages kind of thing and that's not true because you look back and our brains like they were the same i mean you can look at cave paintings or like you know when the romans were going through uh some part of europe they found cave paintings and they were very phallic but it was just it was funny to me because i was like they the, the same humor now like of uh, like ancient Greek and Roman graffiti is just like the same kind of humor that we would have today. It's like they could not possibly have been that different than us. But I think it's also, you know, as I was saying, the language is the part of the thing that's bastardized it. So because yeah. the because the ancient texts are pictorial languages, they didn't speak in the way that we spoke. They, they demonstrate things. So cave paintings, this idea, to my mind, people think, oh, okay, so without language, it means that they're stupid. So they had to draw pictures because that was the only way that they communicated. Well, yeah, it was the only way that they communi- communicated, but not because they were stupid, but it was because universe. that is a more accurate way to communicate. The language that we use has become so perverted, and actually a lot of the words that we use as common parlance actually don't signify the thing that we're talking about on psychological subconscious basis so I like the word like what that means okay well you're mourning i mean like that's that's what that is implying is that yeah. you're mourning something when you're mourning like you're you're grieving a, a death of sorts yeah. well that sounds strange if you if you think about it like why do we say that yeah that language has definitely turned into something uh bastardized but i mean and it also gives clues to other things like when somebody dies why do we have a wake for them <laughs> Yeah, that makes they're sense. waking up. They're waking up. This is the yeah. dream world. That world on the other side is more real than this one. But because people have gotten trapped in the reductionist materialist idea of the individual, they don't understand that this is this is more dreamlike than that is. And when you yeah. live like me, one foot in the spirit realm and one foot over here, my journeying over there is just as real as when I'm <laughs> sitting here having a conversation with you. Because I recognize that I don't have to see you or touch you to experience it. But because most people are so trapped in their avatars and they're trapped, it's like, you know, this whole kind of thing about being trapped in the matrix is this idea that a sim, you know, you're a human. I use this example that, you know, if you ever ever played the sims when you were a kid, like you, you're sat in front of your computer and like, right, I'm going to play the sims. And you're playing your character that you've created and you're living that little life in the sims. 
but you've forgotten that you're rain playing yep. the game you yep. suddenly just completely forgot that there isn't even anybody there behind the computer you're just so hyper focused on the little character that you're playing okay. that you are just yeah you're identifying with that character and then there's all this stuff going on behind you where somebody's going hey you you, you realize you're just playing a game don't you and you're just like <laughs> have to show for it you know i mean it's just like well i enjoyed it for a little bit but i mean at the end of the day like what did what did you gain and, and, and the beauty is sorry go go no me too sorry <laughs> <laughs> I just <didn't> get it. <laughs> yeah, too, this is why i was like we need to have a camera because it's like two neurodivergent people just like, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> it's excitement any normal like neurotypical people would be like these women are rude <laughs> and you're like no we're just no. neurodivergent <laughs> really excited like yeah 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 <laughs> my husband is mad at me for that and I'm like it's not that I don't care I'm just excited like, <laughs> yeah. I literally had this conversation with my partner this morning he's like you never let me finish a sentence I'm like oh, I'm like, excited my house seriously <laughs> <laughs> oh it's nice to talk to somebody else and you're a diversion it's like bah, 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 bah. it's fine you know I, but this is the problem and I think that you know part of the work that I do is working with spirit you know I do like healing retreats and healing day retreats in Bristol that kind of encompasses shamanic journeying and um you know energy work and chakra alignment and healing and and I work within the spirit world which means that when I talk to people I can see energetic issues in their body okay I can see trauma so trauma looks like on some people like tar like black tar yeah. And, and, other, yeah. Yeah. and for, for other people sometimes it might be something that looks like a leech yeah mm -hmm. like a black leech for other people it might be like this dark mist it depends on I mean I'm, I'm starting to see it in different ways but yeah. I've had these I've had these kind of like experiences with people and I haven't like this weekend for instance I did one on Sunday and there's a woman I've not spoken to that the amount of information was like hey this is how you buy tickets nice to see you I see you on Sunday kind of thing she yeah. rocked up and there was an accident on one of the motorways. And so they came in late and I was like, okay, we're in the middle of a meditation. Come on in when you're ready. Toilet's there. Just be quiet. Come on, lie down and just join in. So that she's not told me anything about who she is or anything about anything about any reason why she's here or anything. She lies down. I'm like, right. Okay. So I can see that there's been sexual trauma in your life. I can see that there's trauma happened here. There's been, uh, there's been, you know, a traumatic incident happened with a parent um, or something like a parent form. Um, so that could be like a teacher or an uncle or somebody, somebody that takes that role. And, and I said, that, but this, this issue has continued to, a, to a, a, a spouse after the age of 18. Now that's a lot of information to kind of just pick randomly off of looking at somebody. And I'm yes. healing her. As I'm healing her and I'm doing energy work on her, I'm giving this information to her. She's lying there in a meditative state and she's being quiet. Now, as I'm saying something, I'm saying, is this right? And she'll say, yes. Is this right? Yes. Is this right? Yes. Now, if there wasn't something other than me being a human person, just sitting here having this human experience, how on earth could I sit down with somebody and have conversations with them about, yes. yeah, yeah. How can I, I, do you know what I mean? It's not, this isn't unspecific stuff. I, I can say times, like timelines, <laughs> ages, you yes. know, it's what, what great. trauma it is. How how can you do that? Now I can't explain that to somebody. It's just something I can do. So I'm a professional singer. I could teach you how I could teach you how to make your song better, how to make your voice better, but I couldn't teach you to sing like me because it's a natural ability. Right? Yeah. So if you've got somebody that can't sing, <laughs> I could I could help you to be a little bit better. But if you're absolutely terrible at singing, it would be very hard to teach you to do that. So it's a yeah. little bit like that. I can't, I can't teach you how to be somebody that can see energy, but it is true. That is my true experience of something. And, and it's like when, when somebody says, well, how did you learn to sing? Well, I didn't. I've just always been able to sing. How did you learn to do energy work? I've always been able to do energy work. So I had the same experience with that. Like, I mean, I've always been a very creative individual. And I mean, I, I've been, you know, I used to be a lot more into you know, painting and drawing and that sort of thing. Um, back into it. They want you to do it. Sorry? To get back into it they want you to do it they said it's an outlet for your spirit i was drawing yesterday but it wasn't quite what i wanted to do so i didn't really get in that flow state like i wanted to be but i've been very disconnected from it and i feel like that's the missing piece because yeah I'm trying to get the but traction going 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 back to something i was saying i don't know whether we caught this on this on this podcast or what we were saying beforehand but that it that the intelligence that masculine brain so intelli is comes from intellect is of, of thought and the gents part of intelligence is about creativity. 
and that's the feminine. And when you bring those two things together, that is what the creator is. It's the thought and the creation. Our world now is far too rooted in the intellect, which is just the thought, the thought, the thought, the thought. And that is the thing that traps us. But the, yeah, going back to what you said about uh, the, the, the triangle a second ago, and, and that does form a trinity because there is the, you know, there's the, the lower uh, energies, there's the higher, there's masculine, and feminine, and then there's us in the middle. Yeah, and this and is our- why, you know, Christianity talks about the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, that's the, the Holy Spirit, the Father is the creator, and the, the thing that came from the creator. <laughs> yeah, the Mother Maiden and Crone. I mean, like, yes, they- Mother Maiden and Crone, yeah. And, and all of the, everything, all of the spiritual texts, everything all talks about these things. Have you ever read um, the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali? I haven't, but okay. I will look at I just reach over. It, this is it. It's the smallest book you will ever read. <laughs> this is some of the most esoteric, occulted wisdom that you will ever, ever read. And a lot of this, uh, it, there's five books, I think, within it. And it's, um, it's the book of spiritual man. So it talks about the spiritual predecession before the physical manifestation. Yeah. So, and you will love this, Rain. You will absolutely love this. So, so one of the things that it talks about is memory is holding to mind images of things perceived without modifying them. And this is what I was talking to you about, um, why pictorial language is better than verbal language, because when we use verbal language, what we're doing is editing the actual thing. And we're putting our own connotations, our own ideas and our own things. If I use a pictorial language, like there is that man, <laughs> you know, it's there. Yeah. Whereas if I say, oh, I saw a man with a, uh, with a pair of trousers on, you could be imagining a different pair of trousers, you could be imagining a different color, and it's, so it perverts it, it bastardizes the original message. But um, this, is, this is fantastic, you, you will love this. And any, anybody listening that wants to understand truly the spiritual condition of human beings, this is one of the most ancient texts that, um, that, that, yep. that is yep. really important to read. And it's so short, do read it. Another really one, a good book to read is um, The Secret History of the World uh, by John Black. Fantastic book. Lots of it is esoteric, occulted wisdom in there. Um, you can have to these or like, so, so remind me because I'm, I'm probably going to I will. I'll send, you some, I'll send you some stuff. But um, we should probably finish up because it's getting very late now. We've done 240 oh. minutes. <laughs> um, but no, I've, I've enjoyed this so much. I me really too. appreciate doing this with me. Um, this is this is wonderful. I have been wanting to do something like this for a while, and uh, I really appreciate it. It's been fantastic to talk to you. So one of the things I absolutely adore, really, about some of the work that I do is calling in people that are kind of part of my tribe, as it were, Being, calling in people who are on the same vibration as you. And you can have these really enthusiastic and energy-giving, like life-giving conversations oh. where you can talk all day long and, and without having to explain yourself. And it's just... Um, I mean, I suppose it's a bit echo chamberish, I suppose, but it, that's, no. that's enjoyable for people who are esoteric because <laughs> yeah. often we're such outliers, you know, and, and what, what, we talk, what we're talking about here is so nuanced and so out there, really, um, that it, it's odd to find somebody that's like, oh, my God, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I've always talked about these things with people, and I'm always the one uh, like starting the conversation because it's about all I like to talk about. And uh, everybody's just kind of like listening, like, yeah, like, I like your energy about it, but I have no idea what you're talking about. Like, and, but it's really nice to have somebody that understands what you're talking about. Like, this is something I have not experienced in a very long time. And I, I, very nice. Well, you look, you know, knowledge, it's really interesting to hear what you know. Um, I I feel very simpatico with you, certainly. I'm going to send you a load of book recommendations, but it's been, it's been a real pleasure to speak to you. I'm going to, I think I'll probably pop this up on my, on my channel as well, because I think people will enjoy this on on my side of things as well um but i'm gonna convert the audio and put it on my um anchor but i think it might be able to upload videos i just haven't quite figured it out yet but yeah um, i think you can do things i think you can maybe upload the video file but it's nice for people to see us you know (laughs) you do like retreats and stuff um i at the moment do not have the means to to travel but i would love to come to one of those if uh when i get the chance yeah. That'd be good. I mean, I do work online. So, I mean, this is the other thing. You don't need to be in person to be able to have an experience. So, um, you know, something that you might be interested in is maybe some of the stuff that I do online. So um, we can do energy clearing work and stuff um, online as well. So 
but you know it's been an absolute pleasure hi to all your listeners I really appreciate it pre- appreciate you having me on um yeah and I look forward to speaking to you uh, through TikTok which is apparently where I'm finding all my clan <laughs> me too I'm starting to get a little more into making videos but um yeah I, I thank you so much for doing this with me um I will talk to you soon yeah I'll talk to you soon Rain take care of yourself all right you have a good one bye darling bye